One. Welcome to the ATP Project, episode 29, Superfoods, NRF2, and the death of innovation. In today's podcast, Matt and I discuss our recent trip to the Olympia, current trends in supplementation, and the death of innovation. We also talk about superfoods, why most multis are useless, and why stimulating the NRF2 activation in the body should be on everyone's to-do list. Lastly, we answer a 10 of listener FAQs as we play catch-up from being away last week. Stay tuned, the ATP Project is about to start. Welcome to the ATP Project, delivering the irreverent truth about health, aging, performance, and looking good. If you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, ready to perform at your best, or somewhere in between, then sit back, relax, and open your mind as Jeff and Matt battle the status quo and discuss everything health related that can make you better. Welcome to the ATP Project. You're with your host, Jeff and Matt. Matt, today's episode's a bit of an eclectic one. We're going to talk about superfoods. Cool. Do you like that word, eclectic? I like, yes. I looked it up. Super eclectic would be better. <laughs> super eclectic <laughs> superfoods. We're talking about the Olympia, where we just were. Yep. The death of innovation, which is upon us. Yeah. It's a bleak future, kind of like Mad Max. You know, there doesn't seem to be a lot of hope out there. No, it's like a desert of innovation. <laughs> An <laughs> innovation we, vacuum. But we have Google. At least we have Google, so we can just keep... It's kind of like, you know, when you're, you're dying of thirst yep. and, you, and you whiz into a cup and you drink it? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I do not know that. that. Well, apparently you can only do it once and then you can't do it again for a period of time because otherwise you'll die because of the toxins that are in there. It's true. And that's what's happening with regards to innovation because what's happening is you've got a lot of companies out there that are just purely marketing upon... Hype. Man, yeah. you know what? We've always tried very hard not to become negative in the industry that we're in. And unfortunately, I think we've come away from, from the Olympia. Um, we found problems, but our job is to find solutions to the problems. So. Well, we never look at the opposition, yeah. really. I mean, no. And that's the thing, right? When, when we're creating products and, and when we're trying to help people, we always start with what is the problem and how do we fix it? Yeah. Whether we're utilising foods, whether we're utilising you know, exercise, hmm. therapy, you know, supplementation, whatever it may be. And, and as a result, we don't go out and look at what's out there in the marketplace per se. If no. we do look at a problem, an issue, polycystic ovary, low testosterone, estrogen problems, mm. whatever it may be, we look at how can we produce a product that's going to help people. If that product, if we, we look at that and then we have a look into that space and we find that a product's already out there doing a good job, mm. then there's no point for us to try and, you know, no. reinvent the wheel. If we can't do it better, we won't bother. So going to the Olympia was great. I mean, we had a lot of you know people to talk to over there. Stan McKee, Stan McQuay, depending on her, who you're talking to. Well, Stan says McQuay, so it'll be McQuay. Well, <laughs> I'm not going to argue with Stan. <laughs> uh, lovely bloke. We met up with Dave Palumbo over there as well too. You're recently on his radio show. Very knowledgeable yep. guy. So there's oh, some yeah. really great people out there in the industry who genuinely give a damn and who are. Oh, absolutely. You know, so we're not saying that it's all bad. No, 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 no. But no. Um, it's just that we get so excited about going over. Because typically what happens in America will happen in Australia within five to ten years. Yeah. You know, five years for the sports and ten years for the general health. Yeah. Um, and so normally going over there, we're starting to see a lot of exciting ingredients, some new concepts, some things that we'll be excited to see on the shelves in Australia in the future. Um, this year was a bit strange because we, we're wandering around looking at all these products and a lot of them are just so obviously using the Google keyword search strategy for formulating they're just trying to make sure they at least cover all the ingredients that the stall next to them has got mm -hmm. and maybe a little bit of something extra or a different slant on it Ooh. and and some of these and you're seeing so much clashing you're seeing so many interactions yeah. and this is where you're saying things are getting worse not better because they they're doing the google keyword searching and then they're combining all of those things together so and then combining another ingredient on top and then they're all in within the proprietary blends and and then they they're trying to be everything to everyone you know yeah. um but it's not quite working like all these the amount of greens products that i'm seeing about to come out that are you know marketed to be full of therapeutic you know, foods mm. and, you know, really great, amazing foods. Mm -hmm. But then you can, you're obviously looking at these things, they're spiked up with, you know, synthetic rubbishy vitamins mm -hmm. that are coming out of the same pharmaceutical companies these people are bagging. Right. So 
you know, a lot of these vitamins that these people put in a greens product, they're made from genetically modified organisms, you know, bacteria and yeasts fed, fed different types of foods so they can collect the, the synthetically made vitamin that can then be put into a food product just so they can label that it's got 10 milligrams of vitamin B1 or something, you know. Yes, then then they then they load the thing up with colorings, usually green, you know, load things up with colorings. <laughs> and, healthy. Yeah, yeah, you know, load them up with all these colorings and flavorings and artificial sweeteners or natural sweeteners that do the same as artificial, you know. And then they pump it out into our face and say this is a therapeutic superfood or something, mm-hmm. you know. That sort of stuff bugs me a bit. Um mm-hmm. Because it tricks us into thinking that um, we're idiots. Well, I, I just mean, eating and stuff, you know. Potentially, where it started was the noble cause. You know, for the people who aren't getting their, you know, five serves of vegetables, two serves of fruit. Mm. Look, if you are short, have a greens product. Yeah, absolutely. Know? I mean, and I get that. I mean, yeah. that, that that's that's good. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's when the marketers get a hold of it and the people who are more interested in profit as yeah. opposed to actually helping people. Yeah. You know, they got away from that. Our, our, Zig Ziglar's one of my gold standard quotes of all time, help people to get where they want to get in life and naturally you'll get where mm. you want to go. It's circumventing that, it's short-circuiting. It. And I think a lot of it's too, you know, again, education. We're trying our best to educate people on you know, <coughs> what to look for and that sort of stuff, but it's hard, you know, marketing and that. These people are geniuses the way they will distract us with other bits of information, mm. you know. So, awesome. uh, like, for example... The one that bugs me and it always sticks in my mind because it's the easiest one to see and it's usually the first ingredient on a label in a multivitamin is beta carotene or vitamin A. So we've always eaten foods that are high in vitamin A Mm -hmm. and when you eat vitamin A foods, you'll get beta carotene, of course, but you'll also get alpha carotene, gamma carotene, delta carotene. You get a whole variety of carotenoids that together will make up this stuff called vitamin A. Right. Uh But... Because the vitamin A foods contain all different amounts of that, in the wisdom for the medical world and the chemical world, and this is the right thing to do, they'll say, let's pick a marker so we know how strong this vitamin A product is. That marker we'll choose is beta carotene. So when they go and measure your carrots, they'll say, your carrots has got this much vitamin A based on the fact that we know it contains this much beta carotene. Mm -hmm. So it gives you a marker so you basically have an idea how much vitamin A you're going to get out of that food. But the public now knows... When you're looking for these things, you're looking for beta carotene. We're looking for the word beta carotene on the label. Mm -hmm. So the people that make the products know that. They don't have to go bother giving you a vitamin A food that contains all of the carotenoids when they know the public is just looking for how much beta carotene so they can compare that label to the next label. Well, so Google can rate the product and say this one's higher, this one's lower. I don't even know if Google does that. But you know what I mean. (laughs) Actually, that should be an app. Patent that. Google, yeah. bugger off. <laughs> we'll sell <laughs> no, it to you for a billion. Yeah, one billion. Uh, yeah. So that's the funniest thing is so people are looking for beta carotene. Mm-hmm. So now what happens is your company can put beta carotene in, synthetically made, rubbishy, horrible, terrible beta carotene, mm-hmm. and none of the other carotenoids. And then the person will think that's just as good as this bloke using a carrot powder that contains all of these amazing ingredients plus the cofactors. Oh, yeah. Now, to put it in perspective, to tell you why this bugs me, mm-hmm. they did a study the other year comparing beta carotene and no beta carotene as an antioxidant for smokers. The group that used beta carotene got cancer much faster than the people without beta carotene. Wow. So the beta carotene in those studies in combination with smoking was shown not to be an antioxidant, but was shown to be a pro-oxidant. Wow. But, Matt, well, obviously there's more behind the headlines. So what, what what's really happening there? Well, what's really happening is beta-carotene is not a natural thing, and it's when used out of ratios to its other cofactors, it does strange things in the body. Hmm. So the world, the, the, the pharmaceutical world, and the, a lot of these people formulating products and the manufacturers know that we can put in a small amount of beta-carotene. It's going to cost next to nothing. Hmm. And you'll probably sell a lot of your product if someone's comparing the levels of beta-carotene from one product to the level of beta-carotene in another. Well, let's face it. I mean, when we went into uh, one of the main stores there, and we mentioned the last episode as well too, I don't know how some of these people get their jobs. Seriously, Matt. You know what we need to do? Mm. We need to create a supplement nutrition Mm. course for retailers. Yeah, we'll do that. Because seriously, I just cannot get over 
the level of stupidity <laughs> with some of these people selling supplements. Yeah. And there's not even a, you know what, I'm not even yeah. sure. It's a, I'm going to blurt out an answer that I think's right. Oh, well, the funniest thing was Olympia. I asked a few people some questions. Like, oh. I never forget, there's one guy I asked him about. Um, and we can talk about it. We're, we're developing yeah. a, a, a product at the moment. We're developing a pre-workout fat burner. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say that, aren't I? Um, yeah. Well, I did. <laughs> Edit it out someone if I can't. Yeah. Um, um, so, yeah, we're making one of those things and it, stimulates or well, encourages the body to burn a hell of a lot more fat while yep. training. Get into ketosis. Yep. Yeah, to go into ketosis and that yep. sort of stuff. Or just burn a hell of a lot of fat. Mm-hmm. You know, people measure fat burning through ketones, okay? So they wee out ketones, which is a byproduct of um, fat burning. Mm-hmm. And then when you pee on these sticks and they change colour, it can show some ketones. Uh-huh. So these companies know that. So what they're doing is giving people ketones to drink and then telling you to wee on these sticks. And when you drink these ketones in one end and they come out the other end and make these sticks change colour. Huzzah. As they, they're telling people <laughs> they're telling people to... Um, that they're burning fat. That they're burning fat. But uh, not that they're drinking ketones and weeing out ketones. Yeah. So it's just been bugging me a little bit that I've been asking some of these companies to, to explain to me how ketones stimulate fat burning. Mm. And I get replies like, yes, <laughs> and then and then I go, no, no, like how? What's the mechanism of action? And they're like, woo, ketones. <laughs> <laughs> like it was crazy. I mean, I know we were in a trade show and stuff like this. People were like, yeah, man, yeah, woo, you, you know, measure urinary ketones. It proves it. Yeah. And I said, no, no, how do, ketone, how do consuming ketones going to stimulate fat? And if anyone can answer that for me or provide a reference, man, shoot it in. Because a lot of my stuff showing is that, you get too many ketones and it shuts down fat burning because uh-huh. you're making too many ketones and you're going to die of ketoacidosis. So it's a we negative don't want feedback that. Loop. Yeah, negative feedback. Keep you in balance. So, man, the amount of times I ask simple questions. I like the way that you put it to me when we're on the plane flying back. And you said, I asked this guy, and, and uh, you know, how, how do ketones burn fat? And he goes, Well, it's, it's quite simple. You know, the, the ketone, you know, by taking ketones, it helps to release fats into the bloodstream and your body burns those. And you just looked at him and you go, really? And he goes, yeah, no. <laughs> you know, it's, it's funny, Matt. Like, you know. And again, you're pretty gentle with these people. I mean, no, I am. Beat them over the head, silly with some. No, it's just, but- no, but I'm genuinely curious because the funny thing is, is I go into those things all bright eyed, bushy tailed. You know, I am just so like a, like a sponge just wanting to soak up information. I want to learn everything I can from everyone I talk to. Well, you know what my mother always said to me, Matt? Jeff, you're ugly. Besides, <laughs> that's not very nice. No, yeah. she didn't say that very often. Jeff, no. you're a bad kid. Get out. Get out, Jeff. Is that what she said? <laughs> she said that bad company corrupts good character, Matt. Oh, you know, there's you're no, stuffed. There's no point in hanging around, you know, people that are not going to elevate you. And unfortunately, mm. that's that's kind of what we were noticing. Yeah, yeah, it's just funny. But, I mean, we weren't talking to the – well, some of them were the inventors. Yeah, some of them stuff, were. I mean, I've got pictures of some of the PhDs mm. with their lab coats on in the back looking very mm. Mehmet style. Yeah. And, it's uh, again, that seems to work because these booths are busy and people are drinking that stuff up like Kool-Aid. Yeah, or Crystallite. Crystallite. That's, that's what we, the other one we learnt over there. Mm. Anyway, so just – it's it's interesting and it's and it's a bit scary. And it is. I think so most of the products that we did see over there probably won't come to Australia anyway because they're full of banned substances. Mm-hmm. So there's been some people excited about being able to use DMAA again for certain people. Oh yeah. Um, there's also a lot of other alternative stimulants that have been used. Most of the products we saw over there were pre workout stimulants. Uh-huh. Of course, there's a lot of protein talking about bioavailability uh-huh. and that sort of stuff, um, but just very little innovation. I just didn't see anything exciting and new. And there's a couple of weird ones. There's a couple of – this is the thing that bugged me, especially going through the health food stores and everything while we were over there. In Australia, we're very restricted as to what ingredients we can use. Mm. Um, there's not the same problems in America. They've got uh, – they can use a lot more ingredients that we can. Um, the funny thing is they just choose not to. Probably going back to the same thing, people are reading the back of the label, just looking for beta carotene, looking for folic acid and just comparing numbers to see which numbers are higher mm-hmm. or asking the advice of the store manager, you know, which one would be best for me. So I can understand why they don't look for these things because people aren't 
looking for them, you know? Yeah. But if we were educating educating people and maybe we can – well, we'll use the good stuff anyway because we want the products to work. Well, and, But uh, the problem is everyone wants to make their stuff cheaper and cheaper and cheaper, yet stronger and stronger. But And this is, I, I guess, the – and actually we've got some good FAQs oh, today, yeah. including someone who's used one of our products, Matt, who says he's noticing nothing. So, cool. But, That's uh, something to look forward to, listeners. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> There's a riveting one. But yeah. it's true, though. At the – it, when it all boils down to it, you want to notice a difference with the product. Oh, Either yeah. feel it, sometimes you won't feel a product, mm. or notice a difference over time and things should improve. Yeah, yeah. Or at least things shouldn't deteriorate. Yeah. There should be some way to be able to evaluate if the product is helping you or not. Yeah. And this yeah, is, I think, why people like the best tasting or the highest stem or what have you, because they feel it and they've got sort of, you know, but... In terms of multivitamins, how do you really know? Oh, my pea's gone yellow. Well, that's not particularly... You tasted our multivitamin. Yes. Remember our multi we made and everyone thought it was a pre-workout. People weren't freaking out because they weren't used to genuine cellular energy. Well, the problem was from a marketing point of view, it tasted, it tasted horrible. like ass. It was horrible. I knew but you would know what that tasted <laughs> like. I knew you were going to say that. But it, it didn't taste great, but literally within about 10 minutes, yep. I felt amazing. Yeah. Almost euphoric. Yeah. Um, that made it taste good, didn't it? Well, didn't care then. Yeah, that's right. And, and and the genuine energy that we got off the off off that product was outstanding. Long lasting, no crash. We weren't able, and because we were only just kicking off in Australia, <laughs> we had to make it compliant with Australian laws. Which is, and people have asked us, why don't you guys have a multi? Because mm-hmm. we haven't been able to make one, and we're 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 well, to make, globally now. To make so it, it's making sorry. life easier, yeah. but. We couldn't make one in Australia, which was our home market, that yeah. we were happy with. Yeah, because you either comply with TGA and they want you to use the synthetic rubbish from the pharmaceutical companies uh-huh. and they'll give you a list of what you can use and I'm not happy with that list. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Alternatively, you make it as a food and you're not allowed to actually tell people what's in it mm. and what it does for you. But we still make it. Well, we, we don't make care it available. I mean, people But there's certain ingredients that are restricted. We can't even add it. But anyway... That's okay. We'll make a cracker. It's actually it's exciting. not too far away now. No. Look, early next year, so January 2016, February 2016, mm. I believe that we'll have the product in the market. Yeah. Actually, I was, someone was just asking the other day, what is the product pipeline for you guys? Well, we've got a lot. Right yeah. now in development, we have our protein. Yeah. We have a, a new ketogenic fat burner, which is yep. pretty exciting. We've got our multivitamin. I'm growing all sorts of sprouts. We've got, uh, we've got the NRF. Two, yeah, the NRF two activator. Yeah, we've which is and we'll actually just touch on that a little bit later on. Yeah. Plus, we've also then got the protocols which we're bringing out as well too, which are foundation based products. Which I'm sure that a lot of people, when they hear what they are, yep. and when they listen to the podcast that we're going to bring out with them, they're going to get pretty excited. Can so, we tell them what they are? Um, not nah. just yet. Okay, cool. Unfortunately, no. I'm excited. Lucky you did that. I was about to. Say what they were. No, but I mean, a lot of products in development. And again, genuinely, we've seen a need in the market for these things. And again, we love your FAQs. We love Mm. your questions. And from that, we're able to determine, and Matt goes out and he looks and says, okay, grab this or grab this. And Mm. we can't find it or there's no company that we trust to to recommend. And so we're we're going to bring those out to the market. Yeah, absolutely. Even if it's just for us and our athletes and family, you know. Let's get onto a bit of product. Let's get on some. I mean, enough negative stuff. So mm. you know, sorry, people. Normally, the ATP project is all happy, clappy, and if people get excited to to come in. But I guess there is a dark side to the industry, and yeah, yeah, that's our negative rant. Yeah, that's it. That, that'll do for this year. Let's talk about something super then. All right, cool. Superfood, Matt. What? Superfood, Matt. Superfood. <laughs> superfoods. <laughs> this looks like a job for superfoods. Uh, the commonly known superfoods. When we talk superfoods, when most people hear superfoods, they'll be thinking turmeric. Yeah, we think you've worked in a retail store. What would your soup? What would you list off as a top five superfoods that people come in and say, "I need this superfood super to be super food"? Oh, man, it's been a long time since I've worked in a retail store. But uh, turmeric, you know, garlic, um, acai berry, um, spirulina. Yeah, uh, corella, spirulina, chia, chia, even yeah, all those sort of things. I mean, the funny thing is, is that my favourite superfood is an apple. I, mean, yeah. I think apples are brilliant. Yeah. Um, not that people think it's super because it's boring. It is boring. Um, <laughs> yeah, that, that would probably be yeah. it. Ginger. I mean, I yeah. love ginger. I mean, that's yeah. that's pretty super in my book. But th- but those ones, turmeric, acai, chia, uh, goji berries, yeah. you know, sort of exotic weird stuff yeah. that's kind of got a really cool IRAC score, you know, antioxidant yeah. score, yeah. Yeah. maybe got a, a property here or there. And though. they never even fed a tribe for a day. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> that's a... 
like I have this debate. I'm not a debate. It's just <clears throat> with himself. With myself, I have. <laughs> well, I listen to these people talk about superfoods. And my wife asked me the other day what my oh, – actually, it was last night. That's why I thought about this now. Is, um, the wife asked me last night what I would class as my favourite superfoods because de- all these people were debating about Asahi, Asahi Akai, what, uh, you know, oh, that's what – Asahi, apparently. A- um, AI. Yeah, yeah something like Asahi. But anyway, so these people are debating which superfood's more powerful. And I come out and said, well, my top three superfoods would probably be potato, wheat and rice. Mm. <laughs> Partly, I, I did that for a couple of reasons. One's because I just felt like having an argument. And secondly, because you can't win that argument against me. Because you think about it, is if we're looking for foods that had significant impact on society, if you had foods that, if you wanted to look at statistical analysis and stuff like that, and you try to look at the fact that potatoes went from the Incas over to Europe, Mm -hmm. just at the time as they were expanding, conquering and thriving. Mm -hmm. Then it went over to the United States when it was conquering and thriving. You could actually link potatoes through to some of the major steps in evolution in the human race. Mm. So more dominating of the world than any other food. Actually, I hate that word too. That word's banned. But, I mean, potatoes were even the um, first vegetable grown in space. So, I mean, how super is that? I think it's 95 or something. Like, you ever look at something like potato? Wow. That's a superfood, man. That that built society was a staple food that allowed populations to thrive and grow. And when that food wasn't available, they almost totally crumbled. Yeah. You have a look at wheat, all right? Mm-hmm. We bag wheat uh-huh. because of how bad it is for digestion. We only know that statistics because of how many people eat it. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of these bad things about these things because they're so mass produced because it's such a staple part of the diet. Mm-hmm. So you try to tell any of your Italian and Greek friends that Nuna's pasta wasn't involved in the Roman and the Greek Empire, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and I, 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 I would like to hands. see you watch you do that. Yeah. You have a look at rice. I mean, yeah, the people that Asia. consumed rice, yeah. the biggest population explosions anyway. Mm. So the people that base their diet on rice, actually, so you could have a look at the analysis. You, if you looked at the statistics of rice, it's probably the most effective thing for fertility and population growth compared to anything. In Mm -hmm. fact, if you were to really research it, you'd probably find it helps your ability to win a spelling bee and do mathematics (laughs) (laughs) just from statistical analysis, you know, not stereotyping or anything there. But I'm just saying, (laughs) if you were to have a look at these literature and then compare that to things like spirulina, Mm -hmm. asahis, Mm -hmm. chia, well, you have a look at chia now, people are only just starting to really hook into it again from this ancient grain found in the barrels of some place in an Inca temple. Mm -hmm. But now they're starting to find cross-reactions with allergens. People with Mm -hmm. peanut allergies are also starting to show up allergic to chia, Mm -hmm. you know, those sort of things. So, But, I mean, these superfoods that you talk about as well too, and I appreciate you have a bit of tongue-in-cheek here in terms of, you know. But they're easy, relatively easy to grow and relatively uh, dense nutritional value in terms of calorie. Yeah, yeah. So, like, you know, rice, potatoes. I mean, look what you can do with, with potatoes. I mean, hmm. you've got potato chips, you've got mashed potatoes. I mean, yeah. it's fun to eat. So I'm getting hungry. Yeah, me too. But you've got, okay, so let's then talk about foods then that have an impact. You were about to say real superfoods then, weren't I you? I was, actually. No, well, what's so, like, seriously, man? No, no, well, I mean, fine, yeah. but I mean. Okay, corn. Let's talk a, corn. Well, the high fructose let's, syrup is the greatest gift to mankind, isn't it? I wouldn't say that. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> but it's used in everything. But now. maize was a pretty important. Well, it was. But anyway, it was dairy. Would yeah, absolutely. Well, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, it's like we're looking at our carbohydrate source there. So we better throw in some superfood oils, but, and we better throw in some superfood protein, and we got the macros covered. We are talking though when these foods were on the earth, that people were also eating foods that were high in nutritional values in terms of vitamins, minerals, mm. nutrients. There was no GMO. There was no non-organic. No, that's right. Everything that was harvested was effectively in balance with nature. And farming practices and soil quality, oh, totally different. Tony, my wife talks a lot mm. about that. She mm. says a lot of companies are now going mm. back to it without allowing the, mm. the, the soil to, you know, go dormant every seven years to get yeah. because it's the, the nutrients in the soil as well too that determines the crop right? yeah, exactly so again organic food is something that we talk about whereas that's just what our grandfathers and that previous ate. yeah non-gmo and organic yeah right so but what about foods that have an impact then as far as people's health map what about you know inflammation antioxidant capacity yeah. um, enzymes nutrients that really can tip the balance yeah. in the scales for people i mean quality nutrition because again if we're looking at 
potato chips and high fructose corn syrup and yep. you know too much starchy rice. How all of our superfoods have been used and abused now. <laughs> Is that what you're referring <laughs> Absolutely. to? Absolutely. Yeah. They're actually not superfoods, they're like villain foods. Yeah, they seem to be. But um pick on our friends. So Matt when we're talking about superfoods, people are mm. looking for a therapeutic food that can help yeah. to offset some of the issues yeah. that we're facing today. Yeah. High levels of toxicity, yeah. stress, inflammation, so that's all those you, sorts of things. You always talk about, you know, let food be your medicine, medicine be your food. Yeah. You know, we need to be able to understand how to use certain foods in a medicinal or a therapeutic way, mm-hmm. you know, where we can. So when we look at these foods, we can look at prevention and that sort of stuff by mm-hmm. balancing out nutrients. Mm-hmm. But we can also look at foods that we can consume a higher amount of to either compensate for something that's happening in our life or actually work as a therapeutic good. Mm-hmm. Um, the key is, is to understand how these foods work so you can create a, a synergistic strategy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you don't want to be walking around with a whole toolbox full of hammers, you know. You want to make sure you've got a variety of um, tricks up your sleeve. Okay. So, like I look at it, like for example, um, we, we're releasing a product later on, um, an NRF2 activator. And oh, a, let's talk about that real quick. But, I mean, I'm really excited so about it, this. When you have a look at food. And this is for the human race, man. I mean, this is oh, no, this not is just for athletes. Stuff. I mean, it's great for athletes. And yeah. it's, and it's, but, but we're talking about... Yeah. I mean, I don't even give them a dog. We don't can't, even just... It's not even just humans. I mean, we're talking about the, the, the potential to mm. help with the major illnesses and diseases yeah. that face people. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're not saying cure, treat, or cure, but, you know, you I mean, like, that. you've got to be careful. But yeah. it's it's exciting on that level. Yeah, so so basically the NRF, so when you have a look at your foods, it's a big mix mash of nutrients and, you know, macro, micronutrients. It's got toxins. It's got mutagens. It's got poisons. But it's also got antioxidants and it's got other things, you know. There is this particular gene in your body called the NRF2 gene. When you activate that gene, it it signals a cascade of events that improves your resilience. Mm-hmm. Okay, so by activating the NRF2 gene with foods, just nudging it on a regular basis, you keep this gene transcri- uh, transcription happening. The NRF2 gene is very, very powerful as an anti-inflammatory. All aspects of aging are inflammatory. Well, and so many bases of disease are Yeah, yeah. So cardiovascular disease, muscle loss, bone loss, anxiety. So all those things have an inflammatory trigger, mm-hmm. um, as well as pain, pain and stuff and that, of yeah, course. Yeah. you know, um, The NRF2 gene will also trigger a whole series of antioxidant defense mechanisms as well. That'll glutathione. protect you from yeah the yep. glutathione the yeah reduced glutathione um, superoxide dismutase enzyme systems yep. Yep. does some of the really cool most powerful en- enzyme systems that will protect your brain your cardiovascular disease joints all over your body yeah. from oxidative stress yeah, yeah. the same gene when activated so it switches off inflammation yep. it switches off antioxidants mm-hmm. but it also induces and triggers detoxification pathways that specifically will target poisons and venoms, mm-hmm. as well as plastics, pollutants, estrogenic compounds that are found in foods and all that sort of stuff. So the funny thing is this one gene, looking forward, you know, moving forward in this society mm-hmm. where we're getting excessive exposure to electromagnetic radiations, plastics, pesticides, fertilisers, all these other pollutants, mm-hmm. this activation of this one gene can protect you from a lot of those things. Now. Matt, let me just insert a little thing in here. So people are going, oh, my gosh, can't wait to bring this product out. This is going to be fantastic. Mm. Well, in some senses, we've already released it. Yeah, we have. And the Alpha Venus. And Cord RX. And Cord RX both have extremely powerful NRF2 mm. activators. The one that's coming out is going to be that on steroids. Yeah, yeah, it's freaky. Because um, what we're doing is we, we're bringing out a product that contains, you know, the the maximum dose you need, you know, on a daily basis. And it's more but for with general... all of the cofactors as well. Yes, and yeah. it's more for general health, well-being. It's almost like a multivitamin in terms of that's the way that you would look at it. It's yeah. for general health yeah. to, to, you know, help... Well, it, it is a multivitamin. Well, well, it is, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, it's it's a complete Yeah, so that's coming product. out later. Whereas with the Alpha Venus... So Specifically, that is used to target estrogen per yeah, se. Yeah, yeah. But there is NRF2 in there. Yeah. With regards to the Cord RX, yep. that's to help with the adrenal function yeah, of the body. Yeah, and the liver function. So with the Cord RX, it helps body adapt to stress mm-hmm. and it helps your innate defense mechanisms um, to pr- reduce your stress response mm. in response to a stress trigger. Yeah. So it does that by 
activating the NRF2 gene to dampen down inflammation, support the liver function and everything like that, because uh-huh. that takes massive burden off your adrenals and your stress axis. Yeah. By itself, that cord RX through NRF2 activation has a major anti-anxiety, antidepressant sort of effect, and as well as it's the best anti-inflammatory and bloody good hangover cure we found out in Vegas. <laughs> um, We're not saints, are we, Matt? You've got to, well, you know, you've got to get out and have some fun. Yeah, that's but, right. Uh, yeah, it's all about balance. Yeah, and then um, and with a Venus, what we've got is a specific NRF2 activator, um, which is the broccoli sprouts. Uh-huh. It is very powerful at activating NRF2, uh-huh. but also specifically um, effective at altering the liver detoxification pathways so that we can strip estrogen out mm-hmm. from, you know, pollutants and from fat and everything like that mm-hmm. um, to actually quickly change the body shape. Sure. The funny thing is there's a lot of companies out there selling NRF2 activators now, and when I have a look at those ingredients... They're no, they're no, um, they're weaker. they're weaker than our product that's not even an NRF2 activator, you know? And it's funny because I obviously am always considering business and looking at the business aspect of the business. And when I told Matt that this company said, have a look at this product, Matt, and he's like, oh, okay, you know, I can mm. sort of see where they're going with that. It's, you know, pretty weak version of the Quad RX. That one product mm. alone, they're doing them more than $200 million a year. So as you can see, there's a massive market for it. And people are starting to understand the importance of, NRF2, would you call it gene therapy, Matt, or is that stretching it a bit too far? Oh, yeah, yeah, you can call it that. Um, the other thing too is, um, you know, because it's anti-aging and it's anti-inflammatory and it's good for anxiety, depression, uh, it's good for energy, it kind of ticks a lot of the boxes. It's quite easy to promote the end result and people will beg you for the tool to get there. You know, if you're good, if you're good enough at selling in result, people will beg you for the bit in between. You know, well, we know that some of the pharmaceutical mm. companies, and I won't mention their names, some of the very large ones that are household names, mm. are into this, looking at Alzheimer's, yeah. Parkinson's, ADHD, and cancer, uh, pancreatic cancer, bowel yeah. cancer, skin, uh, skin and skin yeah. cancer. So, so there is some amazing science and mm. some breakthroughs that are happening in relation to this pathway in the body, mm. which we think is fantastic and everybody should have access to. Yeah, so, and that, that it is achievable through your diet. That's the point, you know. That's why we can make a supplement that is purely based on convenience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we can make a product that you know is going to be standardised to contain a certain amount of stuff regardless of what time of year it is mm-hmm. and that sort of stuff and doesn't matter what part of the world you're in. Um, and you can get this, you know, knowing that you're going to get it. Alternatively, you can get these things through the diet. Mm-hmm. Just be aware that seasonal variations in the actives will change. You know, you've got to make sure this stuff's available. But under, in the foods that are available as NRF2 activators, we do have the turmerics and the ashwagandhas. And this leads me into the point that I was trying to make about superfoods. It depends on where you live and what's going on is what could be defined as a superfood. Yeah. <laughs> and so just because there's something that someone has told us as superfood because it's ridiculously strong in something and they found it in some corner of some forest that no one's ever been to and no one's ever eaten it because it's inedible unless it's processed, you know. Yeah. Yet we have an abundance of superfoods all around us. So NRF2 activators, for example, you know, in India, you know, the turmerics and the ashwagandhas and things, very powerful food activators of the NRF2 gene. Yeah. Um, broccoli, cabbage, kale. Wow. You know, so for us in Australia and things like that, they're common foods we'd eat all the time. Yeah. Um, and the Asians, the, the bok choy, the choy sum, the pak choy, they're all very powerful NRF2 activators. Then you'll see other cultures might eat more of the mustards, the radish. All of those things are very powerful NRF2 activators doesn't mean because I'm here in Australia that my cabbage and kale is rubbish because someone in a in um, you know, another part of the world said that turmeric is the only, you know what I mean? So I we look at these foods, we go through what's available and what's in season. What I can get here in Australia, the fresh, beautiful kale out of my own garden, I know is going to be more therapeutic than a, a powdered capsule of turmeric that's come from somewhere, you know, over... You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. it's all about dose, it's about variety, and it's also about availability. Mm-hmm. That's what bugged the hell out of me about the paleo diets and all that sort of stuff because my version of a paleo diet is hunting and gathering. I thought that's what they're talking about. Mm-hmm. So how can I hunt and gather a processed product from the other side of the world that is more paleo than what I can pick off my tree at home? You know what yeah. I mean? So paleo diet, you can't say to someone, here is a, a book about a paleo diet. 
unless they do that for every region and every part of the world. Mm. So your paleo diet right here, this is what's available local and this is what you can hunt and gather mm. because it's the lifestyle, the ethos and everything behind it, not just this food's pickable, so it's paleo, you right, know? Right. Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. I think Tony started following more paleo-based diet. Yeah, the concepts are cool, you know. I, l- I mm. do. I love the concepts um, mm. to a point, and it's and it's like anything. I think um, you can get too far down one track and a bit one eyed. Yeah, <laughs> it's just going to upset po- people in both ways. And I'm a big believer if it works for you as well too. Like in terms of your general health, and you know, my wife, for example, she cannot do long periods of low carbohydrate. Mm. You know, she needs her sweet potato. Mm. Whereas I can go into a full keto diet and mm-hmm. I perform perfectly. Mm. So I know that I can handle that well. That's how I feel. Yeah. The long-term effects of that, though, mm. I might be missing some key nutrients that maybe my body needs. So, yep. And look, one of the things I like about supplementation and about the science of supplementation is that, and we don't want to be clever, so clever that we become stupid, mm. supplementation is designed to help support what we are doing with our food. Fresh yeah. is best. A variety of foods. They're supplementing the diet. That's why they're called dietary supplements. You know exactly. But, um, and we are getting very smart, and the, the ability to find you know certain actives, and again, mm. Matt, understanding how the body works and the impact of the inner so, two and all the rest of it. Superfoods of the past. Yeah. Things like potato, rice, and wheat, which we all agree was probably some of the greatest superfoods over the last few hundred years. Yeah. Would not be the superfoods of the future. No. Because those things are going to be available in abundance and so processed and refined that they're merely providing starch. Mm. You know, so, like, for example, I can predict the, the well, I predict that some of the superfoods of the future, you've got to look at what's happening in food. Omega-3 oil, people, you know, we, we all talk about omega-3 oil. Mm-hmm. Our diet used to be loaded full of omega-3 oil because the world's omega-3 oils comes out of grass and plankton. Right. So for us to eat grass-fed meat, for us to get, you know, r- real old butter mm-hmm. and, you know, cat cheese and milks and stuff like that, mm-hmm. for us to be able to catch fish and eat it mm-hmm. or eat purchase fish that have been caught, you know, wild-caught fish, yep. we, we had an abundance of these oils <laughs> you know, in our diet. Moving forward, the fact that farming practices have changed and those they're all put on grain now and away from grass and put onto grain, mm-hmm. it's changed the oil profile. So people will need to compensate for that deficiency of that nutrient, that yeah. essential fatty acid that has occurred because of farming practices. So okay. moving forward, things like algaes and grasses mm-hmm. could easily become superfoods of the future mm-hmm. because if if our animals that we're eating aren't eating it, then mm-hmm. we're going to have to eat it. Otherwise, we don't get the nutrients that they were getting out of it. You T- know? Tony and I were mm. just having a debate, well, not a debate, a discussion about this as well too. We're saying, well, okay, organic food. So we eat all organic food. Yeah. And you have said it a while ago. You yeah. said, well, not one thing about the organic food that you like is the fact that you know that there are certain pesticides, herbicides and other things that yeah. are not on well, the I, food. Yeah, I like what's not in it, not That's what's right. in it. <laughs> well, you, you can't validate yeah. particularly yeah. what's in it because there is no guarantee that the soil is any better mm. than the yeah. soil that they're using for other things. Exactly. So there was a Harvard University study, and I've mentioned it before, Yeah. where it looked at apples, I, I believe it was, and it, and it showed the... You re- and your the, apples. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but it showed the decline of the nutrients over... It was a 50-year study, and it showed the decline of the nutrients that was in the apples, or it might have been tomatoes. There was another study that was done on apples, that was done on apples, where it mm. showed that copper over a 10-year period was made virtually extinct in these apples Mm -hmm. just simply because of the the farm practices, the soil, the degradation of the soil. The nutrients wasn't there anymore. Again, this is where certain... This is where I believe personally we're seeing a rise in a lot of diseases. It's not necessarily just in the pollutants and the toxins, which can have an impact. It's not just in the water quality, which I believe is in many places mm. in the world, just so terrible now. Mm. Um, you know, they use aluminium to de-bloom, you know, the water to mm. take out the, the bad stuff out of it. But mm. yet we can't cook with aluminium pans anymore because there's a link to a, to um, uh, Alzheimer's. Yeah. Can't, can't think of the word. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah. <laughs> Forgot it. <laughs> yeah. But, you know what I mean? So there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a negative with food, but then even if you just get food that doesn't have the negatives in it, the food is devoid of a lot of the nutrients that should be in there. And again, yeah. this is where yeah. supplementation can play a huge role and yeah. can help humanity going forward. And this is where also research gets a little bit weird 
because we know how important it is for micronutrients to be available in our food as cofactors for all these reactions and everything like that. Yeah, they're never spoken about. Well, very rarely. Yeah, I know. But the funny thing is high-dose vitamins, synthetic vitamins are all tested a lot before they go to market to make sure we know what they're kind of doing. Hmm. But they're not real. Yeah. Like in nature, you don't just find folic acid. You find all sorts of different forms of folic acid. Like I was talking about before with the carotenoids, you find all of them. But in the wisdom of the chemical world, we needed markers, not necessarily confirmation that this is the active part. They're just markers, just so we got a point of reference. Mm. But the marketing and the Googles and the world have changed those markers now to be listed as the active ingredient. And so all I'm trying to say is, is if you go and try to use the, the current knowledge on vitamins and minerals, you'll be making up a combination of synthetic chemicals and putting them together as a multivitamin and mineral where we expect to see certain words Mm. and we expect to see certain doses and we're bluffed into thinking unless they're massive doses there, it's not going to work. Where in nature, those massive doses aren't found in the foods. Yeah. But all the cofactors are, all the catalysts and all the other bits and pieces that make sure stuff is absorbed efficiently mm-hmm. and utilised properly in the world where we do not need a whole heap of massive doses of one dodgy form of a vitamin. Is it because it's a... Syn- that's how we get in problems. Man. Well, that's right. I mean, mm-hmm. is it because it's a synergistic effect, Matt? Meaning, say, if you've got 50 milligrams of vitamin C but you've got the citrus bioflavonoids in there, mm-hmm. all of a sudden the bioavailability in the body's capability of utilising yep. that increases tenfold. Yes, so, exactly. it's, so it's better than taking 500 milligrams yeah. of vitamin C. But what are citrus bioflavonoids? This is the point. Mm. So the ascorbate component, mm. which will be available in nature from a variety of different ascorbates, mm-hmm. all the way from calcium, magnesium, potassium ascorbate, manganese, all those weird forms of ascorbates mm. will yield a certain amount of ascorbic acid into our body. Mm-hmm. A company making a product might say, oh, I'm going to add the, the synergistic citrus bioflavonoids. Mm-hmm. And in that, they might put asperidin or something like that. Mm-hmm. In nature, you'll find asperidin with luteolin, um, along with quercetin, along with rutin, along with bacalin. You know, you get all these weird sort of um, bioflavonoids that are found in nature, but we don't know them all. Oh, We're not uh, well, smart enough and we don't the have the ability thing. to test them all because often you've got to dissolve these things to get them into something so we can test them and then chemical reactions are occurring. So exactly. we have got to the point in science where we think we know so much that we've just almost at the point where we realise we have no idea. Yeah. So we've got all this way, all this knowledge to get to some point to go, oh, my gosh, the food was better. Even the weak food was better. Yeah. And so that's where ATP is at the moment. We're getting with our extracts and we're not looking for just high doses of active ingredients. We're, we're, we've realised that nature is smarter than us oh, hey. and we are trying to work with nature yeah. to help your body do what nature intended. Yeah. You know? And this is where we get angry because, well, that's where I get angry and I'm just assuming you're angry because you frown when I frown and that. I'm not going to take it anymore. Yeah, we don't know what it is, <laughs> <laughs> but we're not having it. No. Um, This is what bugs the hell out of me. So nature has provided everything we need to sustain life. Mm -hmm. Who the hell is some bureaucrat to think he can come in and say, what was provided to you by nature to maintain your health and longevity and everything you need to sustain life is naturally available on earth? Mm -hmm. And there's people that can come in and say, hey, you can't use that. Mm -hmm. You're not allowed to use that. It hasn't, you, yeah, you've got to use this synthetic chemical that we make. You can't use that natural plant. You can't go and refine that to get it into a form that the body can use easily. We're going to restrict all that. But here, take this toxic beta carotene. We pooped out of a genetically modified yeast after feeding it corn syrup. It's the world flipped on its head, right? Yeah. I mean, the world has gone absolutely nuts where you've got mm. these, these large, some of these large pharmaceutical companies mm. which pure evil in some sense of the Mm. word if you look at it Mm. where a jumbo jet liner of people die every day from correctly prescribed medications yet the limitations on natural medicines and food which have killed 
nobody. I think there was one person that might have choked on some vitamin C tablets. Yeah. You know, I, I think one time uh, tryptophan, some people... Yeah, but that was a bad batch of yeast. That's the right. The genetically modified but yeast. But this is, is what the problem is that where the money is, they point the finger and they say, no, hmm. these things are bad. You've got to be careful. Yeah. So the politicians go, well, we're going to legislate against that. Yeah. And all of a sudden... You've got this crony capitalism, which is taking away from our basic rights as human beings yeah. to be able to choose and live life yeah. according to the way that nature intended it to be. Exactly. Wow, man, this really took a turn, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's a dark, man. <laughs> it's a dark, what a dark podcast. Jeff We've, came in and said, I'm feeling down today. <laughs> said, let's do a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> People are turning off in droves. Anyway. The thing is, is that... Don't worry, we got you back. We do. Will, will we stand for the right for people to be able to... Get education, get the information mm. and be able to utilise the supplements and the nutrition that's going to help them to live the best possible life that they can. And if we disappear, you know why. <laughs> we upset the wrong person. <laughs> Black van out the Probably front. makes Peter Carotene. Really? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, thanks, guys, for listening. Matt, last word. Yeah, I'm just thinking again. I never think of You, you knew that was coming and you still yeah, don't think of a last word. Yeah, I don't think about that. I have to. We'll be back next week, and uh, please keep sending in your FAQs. We look forward to them, and uh, we'll see you then. Thanks for listening. And remember, question everything. Well, except what we say.